I'm going to go through some of the differences between three real common, real popular uh, pistols these days. Uh, we've got the Springfield XD45, got a Smith & Wesson M&P45, and a Glock 22. This one's in 40 caliber, so it's not a great head-to-head -head comparison, but size-wise, uh, they're fa fairly similar. Yeah, it would be a Glock 21 would be a better comparison. I just don't have a Glock 21 to use today. So, taking a look at these, well, first off, check that they're all three unloaded, and they are. Um, you can see that they're very similar, you know, from six feet away, I think most people would think they're the same gun. Um, some of the biggest differences, let's just start off with the XD45. Um, it's got a slide stop on one side. Uh, it's got the takedown, similar to a SIG. It's got a magazine release on both sides. It's got a stainless steel magazine. They drop free very easily. They can take quite a bit of abuse. I don't uh, pamper my magazines, and they've lived to, to whatever you know amount of abuse I give them. Uh, it's got a fairly heavy slide, fairly high bore axis, meaning the barrel is sort of up over you know your hand or your wrist. Some people like that, some people don't. Um, you know, one thing about it is it sights. Uh, sure, they can come off, but I've actually I've literally broke two sights. Uh, I've taken these off, no problem but trying to get different brands of sights onto this SOB has really proven to be a real challenge so had to keep the factory sights on it I mean they work fine they're just you know not really ideal for low light um, it's got a cocked indicator which a lot of people seem to really like that feature honestly I could care less I really don't get in the habit of sticking my thumb back here but uh, I guess if I really wanted to I could see that there's the strikers in the rear position I kinda know that because I haven't pulled the trigger but uh, that's a definitely a feature of the gun. It's got a loaded chamber indicator. Of course, this one's empty, but if I did have a round in it, this would pop up and uh, tell me that there's a round in the gun. Again, that's great. I don't like to trust something like that because lots of problems can happen that can make that trigger indicator come up or fall down. And, you know, again, I don't usually get in the habit of getting up here with my hands. So it doesn't really do me a lot of good, but I guess it's a feature of the gun. And again, it seems one to be one of the features a lot of people like. It's got a light rail. Uh, it'll fit standard lights. Here's a Glock light because of the, the model I have. Of course, there's lots of different models. It's the standard size. The muzzle is in front of, or is sort of in f behind the light, so the light can take quite a bit of garbage up there. <clears throat> That's a bear to get off. Uh, it's got two positions, which I guess is good. Uh, the standard light is going to use that front position, so this means that this can use the smaller light, which I guess is makes sense because the XDs do come with a subcompact version that only uses the smaller light so if you already had that smaller light you'd be able to use it on your larger pistol uh, it's got the um, its external safety is here it does have a safety like some of the other actually all the other pistols have a trigger safety uh, then there's a safety here of course there's safeties inside the gun as well uh, very safe gun very easy to use uh, very user friendly uh, a lot of people like this gun and I can see why um, I like it so much I have one Next we're going to move to the M&P uh, 45. Um, this one's again similar gun, not exactly the same. Um, first off I'm going to start with the serrations. Depending on how you like to do your your weapons checks, um, it's got this really aggressive serration that's sort of a fish scale. really like it. It's one of the first things I liked about this gun. Um, it's got them up front and in back, which a lot of people like. Forgot to mention on the XD, it also has them in front and in back. You know, they look kind of plain, but they're in a good direction. Um, really, they work no matter how you're going to operate your pistol, so good on the XD as well. Sorry, back to the M&P. Um, does have the rail up front. Again, that's what it looks like with a Glock light. Muzzle is just a little bit back. They do make a tactical version, I believe, that's got a longer barrel. Um, this one has a slide stop on both sides, which you know, I think that's a great feature. You don't see it very often at all, and I think that's a great feature. Um, it's not really like you need it all that often, but I tell you what, if this hand was injured and I had to use my left hand, um, a lot of people are familiar, you know, used to doing it this way, but uh, being able to do it this way as well, sure it would be handy. Going right along with that, the safety is ambidextrous. Uh, you can get these um, these Smith & uh with or without the external safeties. Uh, this one happened to come with it, so I, I was happy to get it. 
Um, its magazine release is, is right hand only at this point. Again, not real hard to operate with the left hand, but it can be swapped over and made to be left hand. So it's not quite ambidextrous, but it is left or right. Uh, again, it's striker fired, so uh, it's got the uh, first safety here with the trigger. Just a little bit different design, but same principle. A finger has to be here moving this thing, uh, not just you know something else. So um, that's your first safety. The other safety is engaged as the the gun's going, or as excuse me, as the trigger's being pulled back. Um, nice feature about the M and P's um, is that they've got this adjustable back strap. It's quite easy to pull out this pin that holds the back strap in. What's nice is this pin also happens to be its armorer's tool. So that's pretty handy to have your armorer's tool right there on the pistol. Uh, it has removable back straps. This is the medium size uh, with basically the medium size swell. Imagine one that had even a reduced swell and then a larger size that has a, a much larger swell actually. So really handy feature especially if other people are going to be shooting your pistol. I personally end up taking that thing off and changing it around and it's almost like shooting a different gun sometimes when you really change, you know, going from small the large. Um, really I don't have a preference. I've, I've gone back and forth with them. So it's nice that you can take that out. Another nice feature of this one, and one of the reasons I, I bought one of these myself, is um, you can remove that with a crimson and replace it with a crimson trace laser, which comes up and it's actually a little less, um, a little smaller than the Glock laser which comes out quite a ways. It's actually a little smoother. I would have to do some work on the uh, safety here though if I were to get that option. Uh, this one does come with night sights, so I've got those on there. Trijicon night sights. Um, I tried another video and you really can't see them, so I'm not going to bother trying to turn off the lights or anything. Like I say, on the XD, one of the big negatives for me was that I can't get those sights swapped out very easily with the M&P. It came with them. Um, they're fairly decent. They're nice and solid. I do prefer more of a lip, so there's a chance I might even take a grinder to these to just get a little bit more of a lip. Um, basically, so if I had to rack my slide on clothing or gear, I'd like to have a lip there to catch it on. Um, it's got a bit of a beaver tail, so it works great when you've got gloves on or something that might snag. Um, so overall, real great gun. I've really, pre really been liking this gun. Uh, same thing, stainless steel mags, great drop free design. Um, mag wells, or excuse me, the base plates are the same color as the grip, which isn't a big deal, but they don't do that on the XDs. So I think that's pretty much covering the M&P. Um, a little bit longer on that than I did on the XD, but I like it a little bit more. Next I'm going to jump to the Glock. Um, big fan of Glocks, had Glocks forever. Um, until they do something wrong, I'm going to continue to like Glocks. They're very simple, you know, they started this whole thing. So while the M&P does have something up on the Glock, you know, because it was made a lot more recently, uh, the Glock is still, you know, standing the test of time. So to go through some of the features, no frills, it doesn't have some serrations up front. A lot of people can put those in, or have put those in after the fact. Competent gunsmiths can cut into this. It's tinnifer finish, it's going to last forever. Um, it's serrations, while they're not super fancy, you know, they work for however you want to manipulate the pistol. Um, I've upgraded these to some um, Eprolite. Um, I, night sights, um, like I mentioned in the last with the Smith & Wesson, they give you a bit of a lip here. So if I needed to rack this slide, if I was wounded or had something going on where I wanted to use just one hand, um, I could rack it on a boot or on some gear, uh, even just on your pants. So um, that's handy. It's got the uh, slide release uh, mounted on the right side. Really, you're out of luck if you're left-handed. However, um, I don't know too many left-handed people that really complain about dropping the slide over here. So, I don't always edit the videos. Not too bad to drop the slide. Like I say, there's something going on with this magazine, I think. But, any case, um, no, no real um, help if you're left-handed. Uh, the magazine release is on the right side, and there's no real, you know, it's not really going to go over to the left side. Um, no frills on the back strap. Um, the magazine isn't, is it's a polymer coated, which I tend to like more than just the standard um, stainless mags like the other two. If the Smith & Wesson had these type of mags, um, I'd probably own a lot more Smith & Wessons. These mags just work great. They take all kinds of abuse. A uh, big selling point for the Glock, in my opinion. Um, the design of them is just, you know, really efficient. So, um, again, until they do something wrong, um, you know, they're, they're they're doing real well. Um, not too much else to talk about on this one. It's uh, fairly standard. Again, the light rail. I guess I could compare that light rail. Um, again, the muzzle is behind the the light just a bit. 
they're all physically about the same size there is some differences with the uh, grip angles um, I run them all with uh, three dot sights I know some people don't like that but that's what I like I'm comfortable with it I stick with it on all my pistols trigger guards are fairly similar Smith & Wesson doesn't bother with the little finger grooves on it. Glock's the only one with the finger grooves right on the grip. You can tell Smith & Wesson has done a little bit uh, more with the shape of their grip. Uh, Glock is definitely a rectangular shape with a D shape in backs. The XDs have really done the most stream, you know, the most efficient streamlined grip. A lot of people like that about them. I really like it about the 45 for sure. Um, but uh, Smith definitely has it over all of them. Um, you can see that the Smith design, that tool, is also the lariat on the Glock if you want to put a, a retention or a lanyard on it. There's a hole in the back here. Or another option that some people go with is a plug that offers a lanyard loop. Uh, the only disadvantage here is that this is actually a place for garbage and gook to fall out of the frame. And when you plug it up, it obviously doesn't fall out of the frame. Um, another option on a Glock is to just fill it in with a plug. Same thing, it can cause problems over time. It also clogs up your lariat loop, so you wouldn't be able to put a retention lanyard on that. On the XD, you're basically out of luck. They figured you don't need to retain your pistol, so at least on my version, they don't have anything there. I guess I could drill a hole here and it's not going to hurt anything, but really not a lot of room there to plug in anything. I haven't ever seen any external or third-party parts yet for that, but I guess I haven't looked either. Well, we're at 12 minutes. I don't want to make this thing take forever, so there's a pretty quick look at the, uh, the Glocks, the Smith & Wessons, and the XDs.